Today I'm going to show you how I cook using a Dutch oven and four wood gas stoves. I'm fueling the wood gas stoves with wood pellets. This is my favorite fuel for a wood gas stove because it's quick and easy and simple to use. But you can use other fuels too, like twigs. So I have a can here and I'm scooping the wood pellets into the wood gas stove. You can see the can is just the right volume to fill up the wood gas stove. So I can do this very quickly. Now I'm going to take the top of the wood gas stove and I'm going to put it on top of the stove like this. So the, the gap that you use to fuel the stove is oriented in the same direction for two stoves, the front and the back. So this makes it easy to fuel. This hole has to be oriented towards the outside of the stove so that you can put fuel in there if you need to. Now I'm going to take a steel ring which I've made out of wire and a haywire twist and I'm going to fit it around the wood gas stoves, right around the top of the wood gas stove. This is a snug fit and now I'm going to make sure that everything is set up properly. The point of the wire is to strengthen the arrangement so when you put a heavy Dutch oven full of food on top the stoves do not tip over because they're all supporting each other and the wire kind of ties them all together. It's very simple but it makes this arrangement much more sturdy. The Dutch ovens can get quite heavy. You can see there's the haywire twist and I just twisted some wire, some thin wire, and I made the ring. You can measure the ring yourself and you should be able to put it on easily but it should be nice and snug so if the if the stoves start moving outwards uh, they are supported by the wire. When four stoves are wired together they are much sturdier than if the stove is just on its own. This is a very simple technique. You can see the, the feeding hole is oriented towards the outside so that I can easily put fuel into the stove if I need to. If the feeding hole were oriented towards the inside of the four stoves, it would be very difficult to fuel the stove. So that's the basic arrangement. This is quite simple. You can see this is just a wire around four stoves. Now I'm taking my long reach pliers and I'm making sure that I can fuel these stoves if I need to. I'm reaching into the hole. Yes, I can fuel from the outside. This arrangement is working. Now I go to the front and here I can also put the long reach pliers into the fueling spot on the stove and this is going to work well. This is a Dutch oven here. You can see the Dutch oven is made out of cast iron and it has a lid and I also have a lid lifter. This makes opening and closing the Dutch oven when it's hot much easier. It's really quite easy to use the Dutch oven if you have the right tools and the right skills. Now I'm putting the Dutch oven on top of the four wood gas stoves and I'm checking to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm checking to make sure the feet fit into the holes on top of the wood gas stove just fine. There's gaps between the metal. This next shot is filmed out of sequence. The wire should be on the wood gas stoves and the wire should be near the top of the wood gas stoves for maximum strength. So you, now I'm taking some petroleum jelly coated cotton balls which I store in a plastic bag and I'm taking them out and I'm going to rip them open so that the dry inside is exposed to the flame, to the spark from the ferro rod. You can see I'm ripping it open. The dry inside of the cotton ball is now exposed and I'm putting it on top of the wood gas stove. Like this, I typically use two cotton balls to light each wood gas stove. These are two large cotton balls and they are coated with petroleum jelly. Two seems to work the best. They're very easy to make. Just put them in, put some petroleum jelly and some cotton balls in a plastic bag and squish them around until they're coated. You have to rip the cotton ball open so that the dry inside fibers are exposed. The ones that are not 
coated with petroleum jelly. It's quite difficult to light the petroleum jelly on fire with a ferro rod spark. You need the dry inside fibers exposed to the spark from the ferro rod. So you put two on each wood gas stove and once they're all on top of the wood gas stove you can take the ferro rod and light them. It goes very quickly. You can either scrape with the ferro rod striker or you can pull the rod back and hold the ferro rod striker in place. The second technique seems to work best but you can use both techniques. Now I'm going to reseal the plastic bag and save it for later. Now I'm going to take a ferro rod and a striker. In this case a striker is made out of a scissor and I'm using the scrape technique now so I'm scraping and I'm angling the striker forward and I'm trying to drop some sparks onto the petroleum jelly coated cotton balls. In this case the cotton balls fell to the bottom of the stove and I'm trying to light the petroleum jelly coated outside with the ferro rod spark and it's not working well. You need the dry fibers inside. So this is the striker and it's held slightly on an angle forward and to the side and now I'm just pulling the rod back and holding the striker in position. This seems to work better and you can see I'm throwing the spark or dropping the spark onto the exposed dry cotton fibers. You just keep on striking and the sparks keep falling and eventually it'll get lit. Once you're good at it, you can probably do it with one or two strikes. Sometimes they're a little hard to get going. Now I have the long reach pliers and I'm going to Use the long reach pliers to drop the flaming petroleum jelly coated cotton balls into the wood gas stove and on top of the wood pellets. You see I just sort of push them in. And I'm very careful to do this. The long reach pliers keep my fingers nice and far away from the flame. Be very careful when you do this so you don't burn yourself. And now I just wait. It takes about four minutes for the wood pellets to start burning. It might take shorter or longer, depending on your particular situation. So you just stand back now and let the petroleum jelly coated cotton balls burn and they will light the wood pellets on fire. The petroleum jelly coated cotton balls don't smell very good when they're burning, but this smell is over in a short period of time. You can see by this point the wood pellets are burning and I've got a nice flame. This stove is gasifying so basically it's burning the smoke. And I'm putting the Dutch oven on top and holding it with the lid lifter and the handle and I have welding gloves on and I shake the Dutch oven a little bit to make sure that it is secure. I sort of push it back and forth just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. I rock it. Yes, this is secure. And you'll notice the wire is near the top of the wood gas stove to ensure that the stoves have match maximum structural strength in this four stove arrangement. Now I have a plywood windscreen around the wood gas stove and the wood gas stoves are set up in an outdoor fireplace. This is a pretty good arrangement. And I actually have a top on top of the windscreen. It's quite high. And so I could cook in rain if I wanted to. And this would work just fine. So I'm protected from the rain and protected from the wind. The wood gas stoves need to be protected from the wind because if you don't, the flame will just be blown out from underneath the Dutch oven and you'll get much less heat. You can see that is essentially how it looks. And you keep monitoring this stove the entire time when you're cooking so in case something catches on fire you're there to put it out quickly. You can use a shovel or some water. If you're watching anything that catches on fire will not have a chance to burn long. 
I've never had a problem with this arrangement, but just be careful. You can see here uh, the stoves are far enough from the plywood that the flame cannot touch the plywood. But you're watching it all the time. So you can see this Dutch oven is cooking nicely. I'm getting a lot of heat on the Dutch oven and you can see I'm using only a little bit of fuel and there's no visible smoke and not much visible flame because of the windscreen which is actually also acts kind of like a blind. So you can see this stove is getting lots of heat and steam is coming out of the stove. That means the water inside is getting very hot. I use water for it, these tests just to show that it can heat up a, bi a big Dutch oven full of water. Water, it, it takes a lot of heat to make water boil. You can also have a little hole in the top of your roof if you want to. So that lets some of the hot air escape. See now I have the Dutch oven outside without a windscreen. You can see it is boiling nicely. The flames are just cooking the Dutch oven and they're heating it up and I'm getting a very efficient result out of this arrangement. I took the windscreen away just to show you how the stoves are set up and how the Dutch oven is perched on top of the four stoves. You always make sure that the Dutch oven is secure and that it won't fall over and dump the hot contents on you before you let go of the handle. Now I'm lifting off the lid with the lid lifter and you can see I had a nice rolling boil. The lid allows the stove to cook more efficiently. I'm putting the lid back on top and now I let the Dutch oven cook some more. So if you can boil water, you can cook anything in this Dutch oven. Because that's a lot of water and it takes a lot of heat to boil that much water. You can see I have a trivet in the bottom, so if you had less water, you could easily put a roast in there and it would cook nicely. So I, I like to wear gloves and use the lid lifter when I maneuver the Dutch oven and I'm careful to keep it away from my legs just in case something spills or it falls because it's quite heavy so you sort of think ahead if something goes wrong I won't have a problem now I keep it far from my body and I put it on top and I shake it a little bit just to make sure that it's secure yeah it's secure before I let go of the handle you can see it is cooking nice now I put the lid lifter into the outdoor fireplace so that it is easily accessible when I need it. I'm going to pick it up, hold the handle of the Dutch oven, and use the lid lifter to stop the Dutch oven from tipping. I put the lid lifter on top of the Dutch oven and it's ready for use. These stoves can also be lit in sequence to reduce the amount of fueling time and to increase the cooking time and also to control the temperature. You can light two stoves at once, kitty corner, opposite each other, and then once they've started to die down, then you light the next set of stoves. And it takes a little while for the stoves to heat up, so you want to plan ahead a little bit. So you don't light the stove when it's completely down, when the first two are completely burned out you light them when they're starting to die down a little bit so there's another option and you can also light one stove at a time and this means you have four times as much cooking time you can take a petroleum jelly coated cotton ball and you can light it in the stove that's already burning this is very easy to do then you don't even have to use a ferro rod I use the long reach pliers to hold the cotton ball and eventually it'll catch on fire. The flame has to burn through the petroleum jelly and then you drop it into the next stove and then that stove catches on fire. And then you, you have another maybe half hour of or 35 to 40 minutes of burn time with a hot flame. I'm demonstrating again, I use the pre-existing flame to light the next stove. 
which is already pre-fueled with wood pellets. So that's how you do it. So you, you light one stove off of the next and then you don't have to keep taking the Dutch oven off and refueling. You can also go one stove, light one stove at a time. This is much less heat, but that means you have four times the amount of cooking time before you have to refuel the stove. This is of course not even heat, so it works better if you have a little bit of water in the bottom and the heat water sort of equalizes the heat and the steam sort of steams everything inside of the Dutch oven. So this works for some cooking techniques. But you can use the four flames at once. You can use four stoves at once, two stoves at once, or one stove at once. Now I'm putting the Dutch oven on top and I'm rocking it a little bit to make sure it's secure before I let go of the handle to make sure that it doesn't fall over and cause a problem so I lose food and get hot food poured onto myself. You have to be very careful when you are using these stoves. Use lots of common sense and be real careful. You can see this flame is starting to die down. I could use the flame that's dying down to light the next wood stove. See, here I have two wood stoves that are lit in sequence and the other two stoves are fueled and ready to go. See this, when the flame looks like this, it's starting to die down. This might be, it might be time to start lighting the next stove. When the flame dies down like this, you don't have a big long orange flame on top, it's getting a little bit blue and it's the flame size is shrinking a little bit. You can see there's lots of embers inside. You can get about more than a half hour out of, of low heat off of the embers. See, the, this is what the arrangement looks like with the wood gas stoves and the Dutch oven. At this point, none of the stoves are lit. Now I'm going to light two at a time just to show you how it works. So I'm going to take a ferro rod and a striker and I'm going to quickly light them. Light the cotton balls and the cotton balls are burning in seconds. I'm going to take the long reach pliers and I'm going to drop the flaming cotton balls into the wood gas stove onto the wood pellets. Like that. This is just a simulation to show you how it would work. In this case there's no wood pellets in the bottom of the stove. But you need wood pellets in the bottom of the stove to make this cooking arrangement work or twigs or whatever you happen to have available. You can see now two stoves are burning at once and now I would light the next two stoves once those stoves have died down. Now, now the Dutch oven is cooking and eventually these two stoves are going to die down and then I'm going to light the next set of stoves. This doubles the cooking time and halves the heat and reduces fueling time. Let's see this tandem arrangement in the form of a high-speed illustration. Two stoves are burning, now the next two stoves are burning, now the next two stoves are burning, and now the next two stoves are burning. I just keep switching between stoves and then I only have to refuel half as much. One stove gets lit off of the next. It's very simple and it reduces the heat by half and increases the cooking time between refueling twofold. So this is very simple and eventually the stoves will die down and that's why you have to keep refueling them and that's why there's an advantage to just using two stoves at once or one stove at once so you don't always have to keep on refueling. So again I take a cotton ball and I light one stove off of the slowly dying down flames of the next stove. See, it's real easy. Just take the long reach pliers, reach in, light the cotton ball, just take seconds, and then light the next stove. This makes cooking much more convenient and a lot easier. The long reach pliers make handling the flaming cotton balls much easier.
you can see now I have two stoves going at once. Kitty corner opposite each other. When they die down, I can use the other two. Now I'm going to show you a single stove lit in sequence. This is a quarter of the heat and it you have four times as much cooking time before you have to refuel. So again, just take the ferro rod and the striker and light the cotton balls on fire. And then take some long reach pliers and drop the flaming cotton balls into the wood gas stove to light the fuel inside wood pellets or whatever you happen to have available. So this is an illustration as to how you use the wood gas stoves in sequence. So one stove is lit and then you would wait until it dies down and then you would light the next stove off of the first stove. And then wait until that one is burned, dying down and then light the next stove. So you can see the flame moves around in a circle like this and only one stove is burning at a time or is burning brightly at a time. You light one stove off of the next. This is how it goes in high speed. This is the illustration just so you, how you, so you see how the stoves are lit in sequence. And it goes, the stove keeps the Dutch oven nice and warm and cooking nicely. You can see here the Dutch oven is cooking and I have one stove burning. This is a nice arrangement. Say maybe if, if I were cooking a roast I'd have a trivet in the bottom of the Dutch oven and a little bit of water and maybe it would take three hours to cook the roast so once the first flame begins to die down like this. I take the cotton ball, I pick it up using the long reach pliers and I light it and I drop it into the next fuel stove and within about four minutes the next stove will be burning or the fuel inside say wood pellets or twigs or whatever you have will be burning nicely and then that stove will get hotter and the first stove, the flame in the first stove will begin to die down. And I'll repeat the process with the other stoves. You can see how I'm careful to have the gap in the top of the wood gas stove easily accessible so that I can, it's actually turned outwards so that I can refuel it using long reach pliers. If the gap were turn towards the inside of the stoves, I couldn't refuel the stoves. This way I'd have to take the Dutch oven off of the top of the stoves and then refuel. That would be a little bit more inconvenient. You can see one stove is now burning and the other three are all not burning. They'll be lit in sequence later on. This is a real simple arrangement and if you learn how to do this, you can actually cook with a Dutch oven on wood gas stoves. You could also put some coals on top of the Dutch oven if you wanted to, then you'd get heat from the top, say some, some briquettes or some lump charcoal, whatever you happen to have, but it has to be lit and burning. And you get heat from top and bottom. Thanks for watching and have a great day.